Hello everyone, I'm Fei Fei Liao. My pronouns are she and her. This is the podcast series Voices of Us. I'm the host, talking with our amazing speakers about LGBTQIA plus international student stories and share some learnings with you. In this episode, Rames and Ali will share with us about their cultural identity and how it impacts their career journey. Welcome, Rames and Ali. Yeah, so yeah, um, you can call me Ali. Um, my pronouns are he or they, and I'm originally from Iran,、uh, and I've been here for almost a decade. So next year will be ten years, and、um, I I love music. Um, anything to do with music, dancing, singing. I do singing on the side as well, and I I do software engineering as a full time job. Thank you.、Um, I'm Rames Williams.、Um, I go by the pronouns he him. I was born in American Samoa.、Um, I've been in Australia for fifteen years.、Um, my hobbies are. I don't know. I, don't, I really don't know what my hobbies are. <laughs> I feel like I'm. I have ADHD sometimes. So many opportunities. Yeah, like it、mm. really is like that.、Um, but I do love just sleeping.、Oh, I do、nice. love just sleeping <laughs> and being lazy.、Yes. Mm, right. So, are there any different experiences regarding your identities?、Uh, you know, when you were back in the home country and coming here, did you find、uh, any differences? Yes,、yeah, so it, it was a culture shock for me for sure. It's very different than like the Western culture, like where、mm. we're from. You might not be super familiar with it, but you, I would usually say it's similar to like Turkish or、um, like Turkish culture.、Um, What was the Turkish culture like? Yeah,、um, so basically, like it's it, I mean it's like Islamic countries, right? So like、mm. it's kind of、um, yeah, there's there's like one kind of like one way of living, I guess. So.、Mm. In, like a lot of people are in the box, so like, if you're like out of the box, it would, it would be a bit、um, kind of like, oh, what's going on? So when I came here,、um, I mean, like you see, like I, I still didn't didn't know who I was, like completely, like I mean, identity wise,、mm. I wasn't really sure.、Um, and then I came here, I was also trying to fit in as well because like I didn't know anyone、uh, when I came here. So when I came here, I was just like by myself completely, like I didn't know anyone.、Um, And yeah, so when I got here, I didn't know anyone. So it took me like a while to kind of、um, get to know people. And then even when I did, I was still, I feel like I was like still trying to fit in. So like, like oh, I need to like find as many friends as I can. <laughs>、um, but yeah, like it was kind of a culture shock in a sense that、um, yeah, like didn't know anyone. The way they obviously the language was different as well.、Um, so that was、uh, like I could speak English, but it was still. I mean, I still have an accent. Back then, it was like even more. So like, pe- people would always like pick up on it. It's like, oh, you have an accent.、So, like, which which is fine. But um, yeah, I would get a lot of questions like, oh, where are you from and stuff, and which is okay. But sometimes like when people ask,、um, it depends like how people ask. So、mm. um, they kind of like put you in a box sometimes. It's like, oh, so you're not from here, so you probably don't know everything, kind of thing. Especially when you're at uni. Mm. Um, I feel like I used to be put in the box a lot. It's like, oh, okay, so he's not from here. Like he doesn't know much about you know. Um, yeah, I feel like I kind of like rambled there, but yeah,、um, I've definitely con- culture shock.、Um, took a while to kind of、um, get used to, like, like I guess feeling comfortable. Like first of all, like getting to know myself, and then also getting to know the culture around and like the people, and like finding friends and things like that. So it t- took a while, but、um, mm. I feel like now I know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and、uh, and. Like now, I love both cultures. Like I can see the differences, and like I appreciate both of them. So like, there's always things that, like back home, I miss about my culture that doesn't exist here,、um, mm. and vice versa. It's like the stuff that I've seen here that I'm like, oh, I wish you know people back home would also maybe not worry too much about this one thing that doesn't really matter. Well, yeah, things like that.、Mm. Can you give、yeah. some specific examples and what's in the box and what you、yeah. are trying to fit in? Um, I mean, when I was here,、uh, the reason I was trying to fit in was、um, obviously didn't have friends and didn't know anyone. So I was like,、um, like yeah, I need to like find, I guess, my tribe. <laughs> and、um, back then, yeah, I feel like I kind of like I would just go to anyone and be like, you know, if I talk to anyone, I would just like s- like suddenly want to become friends with them. It's like 
it's, I, I was like really trying hard to like find friends and um you know i would like uh, i would m- meet someone and i would be like oh like we had a conversation there was, there was actually this one thing that i realized was um when when you come here and then like people see you and like they're like oh hey how's it going kind of thing and it's like kind of surface level small talk mm. um which i wasn't actually familiar with like back home we don't really have like we, we do have small talk but like if someone asks you hey how's it going you actually like you know s- stand there and go oh yeah you know like uh, i've been if you have any issues like you might say something like you, you wouldn't just go um yeah i'm good thanks it's like if someone asks me how are you like i want to actually like talk to them and be like oh yeah i'm good this 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 and then here people will be like i just asked you like how's it going like you know move on <laughs> mm. <laughs> that was one difference that i realized mm. um yeah and you mm. said you had you similar had experience i think i'm still trying to figure out myself mm. because when i did come to australia i went to a a very controversial high school private high school and because i looked asian i was pushed into the asian corner but the asians denied me because i didn't speak cantonese or right. chinese in general mm. and so i really was lost as a child and and then i went to the states same thing happened there um then came back to Mal- um to melbourne and i literally was so scared because i had like i don't know like my american accent was so much stronger and it was so difficult for me to communicate with people mm. because of i think it's just like right now i'm doing it right now but like when someone is speaks fluent english i do hesitate because of my trauma traumatic past mm. because i was at that high school i was actually told by one of the teachers to go and tutor and she literally was like to me you should go tutor because you can't speak English. Oh, wow. Okay. And I was like, like I got so you... sad. And I was like, yeah. I was like, this is not... Like, I pay good money. My parents pay good money. And you come to me like that. And then that really, that really stuffed me up. Mm. Um, mm. And then I do remember one of the Chinese students in that class. I was, I was a dumb child when I was like... Because <laughs> I, I didn't know, like... I think, like... Because in my country, if you're smart, you're a popular kid. If you're dumb everyone would pick on you mm. and then coming to australia it's like somewhat the opposite like i don't know i don't know why but like like the top students is always the popular students in my mm. country and coming here was a culture shock because the smart kids would get bullied by the more popular kids and i was like oh, i don't like know jealousy by the like, more yeah. popular kids i was like i was like i don't know what's happening and then also the slangs the small talk mm. as well like when someone said how are you i'm like I really went into my yeah, yeah, story. Like yeah, I was like telling them everything. <laughs> you were like, wait a minute, I just said yeah. that. <laughs> um, and then like the whole like, I don't know, as a child I was really lost. And I'm still kind of trying to find myself now. Mm. Only because I did lose the Samoan identity as a child. Mm. Um, and then I did try to reconnect it by going to a Samoan dominant school, you right. would say. Yeah. Um, and I did really like it, but... Growing up in Samoa and growing up here is two different things. Like, I think in Samoa, Chinese people are so, so indensed into our culture. Like, mm. they've been there for like 200 years. Mm. Mm. They, they were brought over the, by the English. And coming to Australia and being denied Samoan is like a really big culture shock to me. Mm. Mm. Because I was like, oh, but like, back home, I'm just like you. Mm. Mm. And then, yeah. But what was the culture like there? Culture there is more like we accept everyone. Mm. Um, So one thing that I get really... Like one big culture shock when I came to Australia was that in Samoa we have a third gender Mm. called Fafa Fingers. And coming to Australia it's like being being homophobic. Yeah, it's not it's not a norm here. But Mm. it was there. Yeah, it's like it's like Back home, if you don't have a daughter, you will... It sounds so bad, but you will force one of your child, like... Because in Samoa, it's all about the females. Mm. So you have to have at least mm. one female to be the representative of your family. Yeah, it's kind of like the opposite of the, the Western... Like the yeah. previous Western culture, yeah. Like, and so coming to Australia, I was like really shocked about it because I really thought, oh, being gay was normal back home. Mm. Like it wasn't... Like, being gay is just another thing. Mm. Mm. It's not taboo to talk about being gay to your parents, he, like, compared to Australia. Mm. And then when I went back recently, it's sh- 
it's like I don't know like I don't know where where I am because like in American Samoa it's very Christian it's very religious mm. but in, in Samoa it's not mm. and then you do get like a clash of commu- like culture there but I think most Samoans are just they're open minded but like just depending on where you're born yeah interesting because like for me it was the other ways like for me back home was like even more difficult than here to like be gay or be like any type of queer um so when i actually came here i feel like being here helped me e- even though there's like as you said like there's still taboos and stuff but like it's way better than my experience when i was back home like i it actually helped like i op- I, be- I basically like got to know myself better here and like i came out here and everything like happened here so um yeah i feel like australia actually helped me like e- even though it was a culture shock in like other ways but in this way it actually really helped me like like realize who i am and like be more like com- comfortable and confident Mm. Uh, or like get to a more confident state i guess but yeah um because yeah like where i came from is like it's a no-no it's like completely like don't even talk about it yeah Mm. yeah Yeah. so what was the experience like about home you know when was the first time you realized i might be yeah i think i don't know i can't remember i don't remember if there was like a specific point but um like i feel like you always know anyway but um as you like grow up Mm. like you see you're not exposed to it so like you see other people kind of like talking bad about it and like you're like oh what is this thing that everyone's like you shouldn't be there so like you shouldn't do that so like you kind of like internalize that um i think i probably knew like kind of realized something was going on like maybe when i was like when i was like 10 or 12 or something Mm. um it's like early early early-ish age and then kind of like as i was growing up um yeah it's like you, you you keep hearing stuff like um and then like TV, media, and stuff like that. Um, so the TV media, they also talk about it? Yeah, like I... In a negative like, way or... Back then it was like pretty negative. I remember like um, you would mm. see like news and stuff. It's like, oh, these... um, What would they call... We have like a... Yeah, like like the word queer was like mm. kind of... It's like, it was like a bad thing back then. It's like getting mm. better now. Like, mm. like we are owning it now. Like I'm owning it now. I'm like, yeah, mm. I'm queer. Like I'm proud, but... Back then, even like in Western culture, like you would see, even like uh, watching movies and stuff, mm. like the queer person or like the gay person is always kind of like having a, it, it, it's always like a sad life, kind of like the way they show it. Mm. Like, <laughs> so that, that kind of like, mm. the way you see that, it just makes you feel, oh, maybe I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't be like that. Or like, I don't want to be like that, but mm. I am. <laughs> mm. um, so it's kind of like a conflicting situation going on, like in your, in your, in your head, you know, but like, Basically, I was just like pushing it, always like pushing it to the back of my head and like be like, ah, oh, kind of like distracting myself with other things. And But it always like comes back to the surface mm. <laughs> once in a while. Mm. Um, so yeah, a lot of back and forth when I was back home. And yes, that's why like when I was saying back to you, back to your point, it's like when I came here, it allowed me to be more um, free to experiment, like keep experimenting and be like, oh, actually, you know, I like this. And then I met other people that were like me too. So that was another plus because back then... You know, it was just me and that one student that I ended up experimenting with. Mm. And even him, he was denying it too. So it's like, do we, is there anyone who's actually like owning it is? Like owning their identity? It's like, you don't see that back home. Do you know where he is mm. right now? Uh, I, no, I'm pretty sh- uh, I don't actually know. Like, um, I'm pretty sure like um, he would be still in Iran. Or maybe not, I don't know. But um, I remember like months ago, I tried finding him on Facebook or something. But <laughs> yeah, I have no <laughs> idea where he is. Um, but yeah, like... I would say like it was pleasurable back then just experimenting but it was it was like hell like it was still like going through hell it was like always really scared of like anything that we were doing it's like oh my god like what if someone sees us <laughs> mm. so um yeah a lot of that but yeah be- coming here like it allowed me to um just be more yeah be more free to experiment and yeah Mm. figure myself out yep. that's good yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah very different from your experience yeah, I yeah, guess. Very yeah different. can you share a little bit more because you were saying like it was you were free to like uh, be who you are yeah, yeah so um from a young age so i didn't grow up with my parents i was i my grandparents took me in and right yeah like they majority of the people around me were girls uh, and oh. yeah and so my grandma used to say no one no one cares Mm. no one cares and i would always feel like what the hell does that mean Mm. um and she's like she would always say no one cares no one cares and she like sometimes we'll play like dress ups oh Oh, yeah yeah. and sometimes we'll play with your grandma 
yeah like my grandma oh, and a few of my cousins <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah and so well um she said that she said that the best kids are the kids who were kids mm. so mm. like not the ones that were pushed to you know be do something and stuff yeah. like that mm. and i did love that like i think who i am today is because of my grandma mm. um because i honestly knew who i was yeah like like sexual uh, like sexual orientationally mm. i knew i was like gay mm. um when i was like 12 yep. yeah mm. and experimented yeah, when i was like yeah. hearing that i'm like i feel like i'm a, I'm a slut like i started when i was 16 <laughs> like i think it's um, more like social media at the time yeah, was like yeah was like oh get into it get like into it for it. me it was like hard to find <coughs> like similar people as yeah. well so like that was another issue that i had i was like i don't know where to find these people like, yeah. <laughs> yeah my one was just a swipe away <laughs> it was so bad yeah I was like oh looking yeah. back at it I'm like <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah like I don't know um I think my my how I grew up is very different from yeah yours. it's really different yeah. and it's 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 great to hear that mm. you're you know you're now exploring and you're actually doing what you want yeah yeah um, like my 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 parents were like um for it anyway it's like because it, they were grew up gr- growing up there as well like they're not because like no one is exposed to it um because like it's so hidden um so yeah my parents like yeah here are my parents saying like sometimes i guess bad things about being queer or being gay like that also like made it worse for me <laughs> um it just made me basically just made me come out later like um i, w- I could have i could have started when i was 16 <laughs> um but um yeah like it just um and when i when i came here as well like it took me until when i was 25 that i slowly became even like confident just being who i am like start, starting to date it's like what is dating i like i never dated anyone till i was like 25 literally um mm. And like w- with girls as well, like every time I, because um, my, my, my dad used to like push me a lot, be like, oh, where's your girlfriend? And like, stuff, you know, all these <laughs> questions that parents ask. And uh, every time I would like meet a girl, I would just end up being like really good friends with them. Yeah. Um, yes. And I'm, I would just be like, oh, you know what? Like, yeah, it feel, feels good to be like re- best friends with this girl, but I just don't feel like there's like a, there's nothing there yeah. mm. sexually. So um, mm. yeah. How did you respond to your dad when he also was your girlfriend? <laughs> I guess like, that's oh, why. You know, like, um, like when I was like with a girl, I guess, like having, because I used to like, I don't know, let's let's say you know I was going out a night. I was like, I'll be like, you know, I'm going out with my friend, um, you know, Sarah or whatever. And then in his head, he would probably just be like, oh, okay, like they're going out, like it's, it's like mm. a date or something. <laughs> so basically, he had this whole plan for me, like in his head. Like, he was like, oh, you know, he's going to grow up and, like, get a girlfriend, blah, blah, blah. So, like, all this, like, I feel like some parents, like, you know, just build a life for you without knowing who you are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and my, my parents are lovely. Like, they, they love me so much. But, um, yeah, they obviously had, like, a completely different plan. And then I, I guess, ended up giving him a shock. <laughs> mm. um, so now they're, like, slowly, like, trying to learn. Like, they, they don't fully get it still. And I don't know if they will ever fully get it. But, um, like, they love me very much. And, like, they... Um, yeah, they, they're willing to be educated, I guess. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So what have you tried to explore yourself after you came to Australia? Yes, yeah, so after I came here, I was still obviously in denial. <laughs> and uh, mm. and then it was like other things on top as well, like the culture shock and like um, not knowing anyone, just mm. like trying to figure out w- yeah. what do I do. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. With, with like social media mm. and reality, have you noticed the difference between like the gay community on social media like um oh, yeah. on social media or like what you see compared to reality like i think you said before mm. you're trying to figure out your tribe yeah yeah, yeah even, tri- even like within the queer community i don't i don't feel like the gay community let's say like i don't feel connected to everybody like yeah. <laughs> mm. what so, kind yeah, of a media. tribe you're trying yeah. to connect to yeah what kind of mm. um I, I don't know like i mean obviously like I'm gay and I want to like meet gay guys and like or just like queer guys in general or like mm. queer people doesn't have to be guys um, <laughs> but yeah like I, I love meeting queer people like it doesn't have to be a specific tribe but the reason I said tribe is because like there's so many I don't know like within the gay community especially like um, especially guys um, there's a lot of like you know you're you're this and you're that so like don't come to my group kind of thing yeah. like there's a lot of that so yeah like mm. social media and mm. um 
yeah, like you're a twink, you shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, there's a, they put you like even like within the gay community, they put you in more boxes, and I'm yeah. like, I thought we were trying to get out of the box. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, and then you find out there are more boxes. More boxes like, <laughs> exactly. It's like more niche boxes. I'm like, oh, this is getting like smaller and smaller. <laughs> like a bushka doll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's like yeah, the, the you know twink or like this and that, and like I'm like, okay, like <laughs> mm. I just I don't know. I just um and so that's that's what I mean by saying like try. I don't even know like what what it means to find my tribe, but like just people I like, click with, I guess. Like yeah, mm. yeah basically that's yeah. What about you? Like uh, your experience with the reality and social media? <laughs> um, I think reality and social media. Um, uh, the one thing I would say to everyone is get off Grinder. Oh, yeah. Grinder is disgusting. It is disgusting. It is disgusting. It comes off. I mean, I'm still on it, but I, I'm <sighs> like the, the the reason I'm I'm on it. I and mean, do you know about you know about yeah, Grindr? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and like it's talk. It's like shit. It's like a shit environment. It's like toxic. But the only reason I'm on it is because most of the gay people are there, especially the gay guys. Mm. So I'm like, because like these days apps are pretty big like that's it's kind of like mostly the way you meet people unfortunately um because it kind of it's kind of hard to like because I'm, I'm more of a let's go out and like meet people kind of mm. thing but i don't know with the way life is now and especially like after covid it's kind of everything is like mostly online it's like yeah. so a lot of people use it so i'm like the, re- the only reason i'm on there i'm like maybe i'll find some like friends or whatever because i actually I actually ended up finding a really good friend like mm. through grind there like so it's like pretty rare but it happens mm. um but yeah it is a really toxic environment it is it's not, disgusting. It's not good. Yeah. sounds like you had some <laughs> toxic experience yeah. no i think i think trying to figure out yourself in the queer community is and going on grinder mm. is the worst place like mm. it I've, crushes your confidence yeah it does mind. like people will block like if it's the wrong angle they'll block you they'll be like uh like it's like you know send me more photos or whatever of like yeah and they don't send you they don't send you anything either that or like you would send like two photos or three Mm. photos and you get blocked i know that's like really bad for like i used it used to really hit me like i'll be like Mm. holy shit like i just talked with this person for like two hours and i got Mm. blocked yeah exactly yeah (laughs) now i'm now i'm pretty immune to it but yeah Mm. i'm not i I get so social i get so sensitive i'm like i'm like like, delete the app delete the account um because i i i find i i really feel like um grinders taking over the community mm. like in the fact that yeah. it's not a social media un- unfortunately for me um because of from what i've experienced it's not mm. a social media anymore it's more like just a hookup app it is pretty much a hookup and app. unfortunately it's all about the looks and it's never about um trying to like find like meaningful yeah meaningful yeah. friendship and stuff yeah um <clears throat> you can find it on there but it's really really it's Rare. like yeah. finding a hay it's like finding a needle in a haystack yeah <laughs> because it's so like that and also like it's like instagram it's like straight it's like straight girls with instagram like mm-hmm. you need to look like that for that person to see you like that yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. and then for them to you know press uh what's it tap or whatever. yeah tap <laughs> tap it's like like yeah mm-hmm. it's like like and it's like oh yeah it's too much it's, mm, yeah. right so what other activities you've tried and to meet people and also how you can kind of identify they are part of your community because I think a lot of times what people often find difficult is if you just walk on the street and you don't want to just write I'm gay on your forehead <laughs> and saying you're gay but you also want to find people you know n- if not through apps if not um, yeah. through clubs and I know a lot of people don't like clubbing mm. uh, it's a very difficult have you yeah, tried it, any? It is difficult. Um, yeah, that's why I would say like, because um, I, I found I, I found that thing difficult with apps. I found it difficult mm. with clubs. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's why I kind of like started. Um, yeah, kind of like trying these networking events as well. And that was because actually one of my friends wanted to go, so then he told me, and I was like, oh okay, yeah, I'll, mm. I'll come by as well. So I don't. I think I should start doing this, but I don't really like deliberately look for these these mm. events unless like someone tells me oh there's this thing happening mm. do you want to come so yeah i want to like start doing more more of that deliberately like finding um yeah like you know hiking groups or like so- something that i'm like probably um that i'm into like music maybe like finding mm. some some something to do with music like mm. maybe uh a band with like queer people or something but mm. it's, it's really hard to find them like mm. i don't know how like do i just go to facebook group and like mm. try to find have you <laughs> tried facebook yeah. or any other i've tried like facebook groups but um it's just not really like th- there's a bunch of stuff but like it's either like or, or meetups like meetup.com mm. but like 
usually it's like five people say we're attending and then two of them don't even like maybe just two of them come so like mm. <laughs> it's kind of like sad play the same mm. instrument yeah. guitar <laughs> so uh, it's really hard to mm. find an event where there's a lot of people coming in and like mm. you know joining so I, I found that difficult yeah finding finding the right events for me to go to because mm. um, I've been like searching on you know Facebook group or like meetup.com mm. and especially after COVID it got even worse so mm. yeah it's just um, yeah I'm finding that difficult so it's like where do I meet people other than apps and clubs yeah I'm mm. still trying to figure out <laughs> mm. what about you yeah. um, so I think I have a balance in that like I do go out but when I was growing up I was in minus 18 a lot I went to their events a lot mm. and that's why I started to like going to events mm. um, but other than that I was a Vikasasi mm. um, so Vikasasi is a student run organization for student voices in high school and I was selected to be one of the 15 um, and basically I was I try to push for more queer I don't know, like qu- more queer voices mm. inside the mm. inside basically parliament. Um, and after that, I started. I did badminton. Mm. <laughs> I did. I did badminton. I did netball. I mm. like like I said at the start. I'm really like ADHD. Mm. Like if I if I like a hobby and I don't like like I'll start it and then I'll somehow you know finish it mm. and then next one next one. Mm. So like I do have badminton racket a tennis racket a Mm. golf racket i have Mm. everything so if you want to buy some (laughs) if you want to start a new hobby (laughs) just literally hit me up i literally have like violin i i was a part of like this violin or um this gay orchestra Mm. and it was it's not mm, it's literally like like, it was uh, it was literally just three people and uh, we all played violin oh my god yeah it was we all played violin (laughs) orchestra Three violins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't an orchestra. It was literally just three violins. Yeah, mm. yeah. And I was like so sad because I was like, oh, this is gonna be fun. This is gonna be fun. It mm. Went in three three violins. I was like, this is like this is like I'm so sorry, but this is like two bottoms doesn't make a top. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not gonna work out. Yeah, mm. yeah. And I walked out so sad, but I made great friends. Yeah. Um, and I think I think the one thing that I would suggest is dive into it. Mm. because at the end of the day what's really stopping you Mm. because you really did come out when for example you you really did come out from a country that is so against us Mm. as a community yep so what's really stopping you now yeah but i think that's a good to know you know different people have a different supporting system Mm. and Mm. building up the confidence i think first thing is that your yourself and the self-reflection is really important Mm. but we also want to know what external support can help with the process as well i really enjoyed having the conversations with both of you and yeah, that's a, a wrap for today. Thank, Thank you, you for Thank coming. You for us. Thank you for having yeah. us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for listening to Voices of Us podcast series produced by Co-Inventors. If you feel it's worth sharing, we'd love to share it with your family, friends, and the world. You can find all the episodes on Co-Inventors, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and the City of Melbourne Libraries SoundCloud. Give us a follow and like. We also really appreciate the great support from Yakvik Hague Grant, City of Melbourne Libraries, AGMC, and RMIT Translation and Interpretation Display.